definitely a, a question about the world class ability of Indians with respect to rehabilitation, which was brought up by Dr. Srivastava right now. Dr. Sharun Srinivasan visited our clinic in Chennai on the 23rd. I have been doing this for 13 years in different parts of the world, and I can bet my last one. We are not only really world class, we are better than anybody anywhere in the world. In terms of ambience, in terms of the techniques used, in terms of who is contributing to this. And we work with basically what we call neuromodulation or neurofeedback. Uh, and I've been, as I said, uh, around for quite some time. Uh, there are two parts to the presentation that I'm bringing out here. And I thought it's better that we start with the second part and then come to the first part for the simple reason. You can really find out the effect of this, the efficacy of this. It's almost unbelievable. Uh, Dr. Sharan Srinivasan called it pure magic. These are not my words, please. So uh, let's start why the pure magic happens. It has gone, it is, it's not empirical art. It is completely based on only one thing, empirical evidence. 100% of whatever we do is empirical evidence. And then you have to make that inductive jump. In any aspect of science today, you have a subjective side where you have to come to conclusions on how you're going to proceed with certain things. And when you make that jump, there is that subjective aspect to it. So it is still magic, but it is pure magic as Dr. Srinivasan or uh, Dr. Sharma Srinivasan puts it. All right, let's go. Uh, go ahead. Uh, see, one of the things that we discussed or, or have moved away from, from Dr. Stubbins, uh, is this 10 day intensive, which we started sometime in uh, December after I met a couple of clinicians from the US. Uh, thankfully, because of uh, the cyclone Sandy, uh, I was invited to Harvard Medical School, as you saw that, uh, to Spalding to work on cerebral palsy specifically, but it so happened that I couldn't travel because uh, all the flights were grounded. So my uh, very good friend who lives in Atlanta called Marty Woodkay said, hey, I will come and take, pick you up from Philadelphia, let's spend a couple of days, the, the aircraft which should be up and running, and let's do this in such a way that uh, all of us benefit from this. I think I will benefit from no knowing what you do, and now you will benefit from what I do. So I went there and found he could deliver something in 10 days, which I couldn't do in 6 months. So that's how we started this 10 day intensive sessions now in Chennai. We do about 16 children at one go, and we have been seeing results that are nothing short of unbelievable. Now, that being the case, where do we start? Uh, we do work with EEG, that's why the cap here at the bottom. Whether you're a 3 year old, or a 60 year old, or a 22 year old, Whoever walks in is first capped. You do an EEG of them, and then what we call quantitative EEG is done. In a normal EEG, only eyeballing the uh, what's what you're looking at, but in the quantitative EEG, you're not only looking at the eyeballs, you're also looking at how the bottom up and the top down processing that the brain does is actually going through. So you're actually seeing why is it at what point did the developmental stage stop? So if you start the brain off from that particular point, you're going to be very, very successful. And you can achieve results in five days. I'm going to show you certain things which are going to astonish you. It astonished me. So that's why when Dr. Sarva Srinivasan coined the word uh, pure magic, I said, yeah, I think it is. Uh, he surprised me with this insight. Now, this is what we do. This is what an EEG looks like, the 1980 EEG. Uh, basically, we are do the eyeballing first, we look for artifacts, we look for seizures, and if there are seizures, send the person away to a neurologist, have them take a look at it. And uh, there are other issues which we find discomforting. Out he goes, gets the neurological opinion, and then comes back. Then the second level is we look at a normative database of people of the same age and same sex and see how is it that we can go forward and find out how the different bands or frequency bands delta, theta, alpha, beta, and uh, high beta are working. 
so that you get an idea of the functionality of the brain from the particle. Also, we look at how the asymmetry is, how the coherence is, how the phase is in terms of timing, and then move on and find out the third level, which is, this is what we call a linear transformation of EEG data onto an MRI. This is what we call Loretta. This was developed by Roberto Pascal Marquis of the Keyes Institute in Switzerland. Now, this has been verified with the fMRI and found to be more than 60 to 80 percent uh, verified. And you can map it onto the brain. And therefore, what it has given us is you can now match symptoms which are observable by a psychologist or uh, somebody who is observing for uh, a psychiatrist and observing uh, any of the DSM criteria and find out which are the functional hubs or the modules or the networks in the brain which are not actually doing it or doing what they should be doing at that age, at that time. So again, it's based on very much on empirical evidence and once you do this, this is what happens. This is a 22 year old engineering student who came in with diffuse axonal injury and this is after 15 sessions. What did we do? We work with the brain, work with the spinal cord, and also did some little yarn, and this is what happens to his hand. And if we think this is what happens only in a brain injury, think again. Look what happened to a person who walked in with a third I mean, This is a 35 year old depression person. The only reason she walked into my clinic was she was the niece of my direct, the other director. Number two, there was a marriage in the family within 15 days time and they did not want to go to somewhere else, they wanted quick results. So they said, hey, what can we do? Let's take a look. She was on four antidepressants, going through hell and completely out of this world. She was not even focused. In fact, her husband had to give her a tap on the back to even tell that I am going to put a belt around her uh, stomach to work with the gut. Now, here is a person who drives two and a half hours on the last day of training after 20 sessions and she has this particular problem and that has to be addressed but that has to be addressed behaviorally. Alright, if it is only depression and brain injury, what happens to stroke? Now, here is a situation where this person had an infarct on the posterior temporal lobe. We had one in beta, in fact Dr. Srinivasan took a look at that particular stroke patient. And you can see what happened in this, this person. Within five sessions, we were able to bring back more connectivity in the brain. Five sessions. In ten sessions, we got the brain hyper-connected with respect to a particular frequency band because we wanted delta out because that is the biggest problem in the brain. As long as you have delta in the brain, there is no connectivity. So if I needed connectivity, I needed delta out, which means the thalamocortical networks begin to function, the corticocortical networks begin to function. So we knew how what to do in order to get connectivity back into life, but we wanted the delta. So what did we do? We could we could successfully replicate it in 10 sessions. She is back in Chennai now, and we are doing wonderfully, and she is beginning to talk one word. And she's in three out for three years. A 33 year old shouldn't have had a baby. She was working with Microsoft in Seattle. Wrong diagnosis, she went right down, ninth month she had a stroke. The baby, baby had to be you know, taken out. Now, the next thing is, uh, this is a, a, both the parents and doctors, shared with autism. Please see the number of sessions, please. We have not even started work with this child. We have already got the problem of lack of engagement or social behavior out. The brain now is ready. It will engage with the external world. Five sessions. We have not even finished with this guy. And this is happening again and again and again for the one, just one reason. I told you before, uh, I worked with the people who were funded by the NH or by the Human Brain uh, Institute in St. Petersburg. His name is Yuri Krabana. Now, Yuri or Barry or uh, Luba, uh, Bob Thatcher, uh, Ira John, who I worked with, all these people have been funded by different universities. So how do they work? They are only working to submit papers, right? They have to show efficacy. Whereas when I went to Martin, he is not interested in working with no universities at all. He's got clients coming from all over the world to come and work with him. Now if that was the case, he had to develop. 
So if he has to go, he had to find a methodology which worked for in 10 days. Because if you're coming from Japan, if you're coming from Bahrain, if you're coming from Dubai, if you're coming from now we're getting people from all over the world, that's different. The most important thing that comes back to us is he had to deliver. And therefore his model had morning sessions and evening sessions. That's the 10 day intensive. He does two week sessions. But we do 10 day sessions. Because I think all of you know that in uh, US, Saturday Sundays are, not, are considered holy, which means they go on a holiday. Uh, every Saturday Sunday is off. So the question is, we said, we will work every day. Because if people are coming from, we had uh, uh, two artistics age 35 from Jabalpur. I didn't want them to stay one extra day. Every day costs money. So I'm working Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. This has been going on for the last 34 years. So, it's no strength. And Dr. Srinivasan is there too. Or Shadu Srinivasan is there too. Sorry that. Now the question is, uh, autism, nine year old with seizures and autism. Five sessions please. Five sessions, we have not even touched her. Morning, evening, two and a half days. This is what we have seen. Look at where the mess is. And this is artifact. CZ didn't touch the brain, didn't, didn't touch the skull. It was not picking up any electric, electrical or any voltage. Therefore, that data is invalid. Remove that data. You have the whole brain now talking to each other. Five sessions. If you do the analysis right and if it is based on empirical evidence. You have to do a little bit of pure magic, I suppose, but why? Why does magic happen? First, you're matching brain dysfunction to brain areas. Sorry, uh, let me go right now. Just do not, let's not waste time trying to get this uh, thing going. Uh, you're matching brain dysfunction to brain areas and network issues. So not only are silos taken care of, you're also seeing how the networks are taken care of. So you're not only really working with one aspect of the brain, you're trying to work with a different aspect of the brain completely. So you're handling more than one issue at one go. And no, most of the time, uh, I don't have anybody else, uh, they don't do anything else. In other words, whatever energy is there, is di this, no diverted towards actually rehabilitation. Uh, the analysis is very, very, very detailed. It is mathematical. We take quantitative data and qualitative data together. Because quantitative is just voltages, current densities. You don't know what behavior is. You have to only look for behavior. So both are apps important, or nothing is more important or less important. But quantitative definitely improves the outcomes. Use appropriate mathematics. You're stimulating the brain and training the brain. What do I mean by that? I'll just come to it in the next presentation. The last but not the least, you're enabling neuroplasticity. And making the brain more flexible and adaptable. 